Do you struggle with confidence? Do you want to know how to be more confident? Is confidence something that you long for but have no idea how to achieve? Do you want to know the skills behind how to be confident? Well, I'm here to share with you today all about confidence and everything that you will need to know to be confident. I'm your host, John Morris, and this is the Mind, Body and Soul podcast, the Tuesday show where we go that little bit deeper to help you on your journey of finding balance in the craziness of day-to-day life. Welcome to today's show. Welcome to the Mind, Body and Soul Tuesday show, where we go a little bit deeper into a specific subject from mental health physical wellness and spiritual stability to the deeper topics such as anxiety, depression, weight loss, and fitness. This is the only place to go deeper in your self-discovery journey. And now please welcome your host, mind, body, and soul's very own, John Morris. Hoping you're doing well wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Mind, Body and Soul Tuesday show where we go that little bit deeper in helping you find balance in the craziness of day-to-day life. I am your host John Morris as always and it's a delight to be here with you once again. Today we are talking all about confidence. Now confidence is something that people all over the world really, really struggle with from the youngest to the oldest. We're going to examine today how to be confident. What are the elements of being confident? What should you never do on your pursuit of being confident? And so many more things. So let's get straight into it, folks. The first thing, as always, that we've got to know in any battle that we face is what is confidence? My personal definition is this. It is a state of mind or a belief in your skills and abilities in a given task or a given situation. Now, where does confidence really come from? And why do people feel unconfident? Unconfidence is basically the place that you are when you're starting out. It is often the place where people feel, I don't know enough, I don't have enough ability, I don't have enough skill to be able to do X, Y, Z. That's why people have a lack of confidence. So flip it around, how do you become confident? Well, you become confident in preparation, in study, in education. If you prepare for your future and you say, I want to prepare to be confident, what do I need? Well, you need to figure out what you want to be confident in. Now, me personally, I'm very confident in speaking, in the world of art, in the world of teaching, in the world of uh, public speaking and, and lecturing if I need to. I'm very, very comfortable in, in physical activities. I'm very comfortable in a lot of things. But if you put me up in front of a stage of students and said, I want you to recite William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet without any scripture, I would be very, very uncomfortable and unconfident in that because I don't have the skills at this point in time to be able to recite William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Do you see where I'm going with this? Confidence always comes from knowing that you know that your skills can solve a problem or an issue in a given circumstance. Now write that down because that's really, really good. And this is stuff that we're thinking about as we're going along. Your abilities have a proven track record to be able to contribute, fix, or solve a problem in a given circumstance. It comes down to your education, it comes down to your study, and it comes down to your preparation. Point two, and this is a really important one, folks, because you will have heard this so many times, and it's one of the dumbest, dumbest sayings that I've ever, ever heard. And I I just can't believe, and it's business owners oftentimes that will say this to comfort people, but it's the biggest crap that you can be told and that you can believe in. You should never fake it till you make it. Why? Well, let's put it like this. If I stood here and basically said, well, I've coached the biggest celebrities in the world. I've coached and worked alongside the biggest life coaches in the world. If I stood here and said, I've made over a hundred million dollars in sales in the last week, And then you find out that I am being really dishonest, really untruthful, and really, really disrespectful to your intelligence, then you are never, ever probably going to trust me again. You never fake it till you make it because what tends to happen is people can smell a a liar a mile off. And there's a lot of them out there. There's a lot of really good ones out there. 
But transparency and honesty are the things that can build confidence in you, but also can build confidence if you're trying to get ahead in the world of business, or in the world of art, in the world of sales, in the world of marketing, whatever it might be. Never fake it till you make it. Be who you are. Because if you're trying to fake it till you make it, you're trying to be somebody else. And that isn't something that's going to help you and benefit you in the long term. So never, ever, ever fake it till you make it. So the question that you've all got in your mind right now is, John, how do I become, how do I become confident? Well, point one, you've got to practice your skills, okay? Now, for me, I didn't just become good at talking ad lib like that. I practiced for about 26 years. Now, you may be saying, well, John, I don't have a whole lot of time to sit there and practice. Use the time that you've got and use it wisely. Okay, the best time, if you want to learn, and I'm just going to pick out different skills here, if you want to learn how to be a good communicator, how to be a good speaker, how to be uh, enthusiastic and passionate, and so many more things, how to use your body language, you do it at the times that you're sitting on the loo or that you're in the bath. Okay, or when you're in the mirror shaving. Now, clearly, obviously, I, I haven't been shaving all that much. But think about what you're going to talk about. Think about, you know, having an interview. If that's where you want to go, think about that big speech that you're going to give. Walk around an empty room giving that speech. Tell your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, girlfriend, your son or daughter that I'm going to do this. Okay, and I need to go upstairs and I need to practice my speech. And then imagine yourself giving this speech to a thousand people, 500 people, 50 people. When you start imagining yourself and seeing yourself doing this, you're going to start building confidence. And when you know that you know that you know that you know what you are talking about and your skill and your ability, then you're not even going to need notes. I have no notes in front of me. I have a little notebook over there that's given the specific topic, should I get lost or I need to get back on track. Okay, but there are no notes because I know this stuff. Because for the last 25 years, I have been practicing this day after day after day after day. If those of you who have uh, followed me for a long time know that I have uh, dyspraxia and some form of dyslexia, so I actually have to practice speaking on a daily basis because otherwise my speech can become slurred, I can become very uncomfortable with my speaking, but also it can actually, but it can also become unintelligible. Basically, that no one can, no one can understand what I'm talking about. So that is how you begin to really practice and hone your skills. If you want to be a professional artist or an art teacher, then you know, practice the skill. People always say to me, how did you become a world-renowned art teacher? So simple. I said, I sat there in front of a camera and I painted and I verbally told people what I was doing. Teaching isn't difficult on that point of view especially if you're teaching a, a physical skill. If I'm weightlifting and I'm doing the, you know, the, the health and fitness challenges that we have, I can tell you, okay, I'm doing curls. I'm taking the weights and I'm pulling them up to the side of my body. If I'm doing tricep extensions, I'm bringing my arms straight down and I'm engaging the muscles. If I'm doing bench press and I'm telling people what I'm doing, teaching is not difficult, but you have to know what you're talking about. And that comes from practicing. The second thing is, is this is dedication and commitment to whatever it is that you are going to be confident about. Now, for example, Tony Robbins, who is a, a life coach that I really, really do admire, um, someone that I've studied under for a number of years. You know, if you put him in the world that he wasn't comfortable in, maybe in the world of soccer or maybe the world of, you know, bodybuilding, I'm sure he'd feel really out of place, a little bit like, wow, I can understand why these people do it, but it's, it's, it's you know, it's not something that I have done or ever I'm going to be. You know, you need to think very, very clearly about where do I want to go in my life. And don't get me wrong, when you're young and in your 20s and 30s and even your teens, you do have the opportunity to change careers several times. I have done, I have been an artist, I've been an art teacher, I've been a pet portrait artist, I've been a wrestling artist, I've been a musician, and I've enjoyed success in all of those different things. And now, obviously, my life's work is dedicated to mind, body, and soul, and helping you guys find balance in the craziness of day-to-day -day life, plus being an author. I absolutely love doing these things. I love public speaking. Now, for me, this is something that I've wanted to do since I was probably, you know, a teenager. So we're talking maybe 15 years ago. 
think very clearly and we're going to talk about this in an upcoming uh, teaching which is all about how to find your life's purpose but think very clearly about what you want to do it's okay to change where you want to go in your life but make sure you're building up skills as you're going along that you can really really use and use really really well in the future and of course, you know, we're going to throw out a bonus teaching as well. Now, this isn't on here, but this is going to be on the website at thebattleswealthface.com. Because this is one of the questions I get asked all the time. John, how do I be confident in speaking to the opposite sex? Or even now, it is the same sex. Um, because that's something that's really, really difficult. It was something I struggled with with a long time, and I, I understand it. All of these teaching folks are things that I have struggled with in my own life, and trust me, confidence is one of them. I'll give you a funny story now. Confidence for me was so lacking when I was a teenager. I loved to be uh, a singer. I loved to perform. I loved to, to uh, you know, do music and everything. And occasionally we'd be asked to do performances. Well, one day I was given a performance and I was so terrified. I was actually shaking almost to the point that I fell off my chair. All because I was really, really nervous about doing this. Why? Because I wasn't yet confident in the skills that I had. My brain, if you've watched the anxiety teaching, if you haven't, I would encourage you to watch it. But my brain was going around and around and around thinking, what about if I'm not good? What about if this song doesn't work? What about if they don't like the song? What about if I get known as an, and stereotyped as this specific person? And all these things was going around in my head. Nowadays, I can stand up and sing the songs that I like and that I enjoy. And obviously with lockdown, I can do it from this very, very room or from the studio and literally just stand there and perform the songs I want to do and move on. And that's fine. That's good. But whatever you do to learn confidence, you must prepare, you must study and you must educate yourself. So give it some thought. What are you passionate about in life? And you might be a teenager saying, well, I'm passionate about, you know, helping people. I'm passionate about mental health. I'm passionate about sexual health. I'm passionate about, uh, you know, managing money. I'm passionate about banking. I'm passionate about marketing. I'm passionate about art. I'm passionate about music. Whatever it might be. Really give it some thought and then take the time to study. One of the biggest reasons that people and businesses fail is because they haven't studied enough and they, they stop studying when they get into business. Every single day is a school day. You've heard that before. The joy is when you leave school, you have the opportunity to study what you want. And that's why it's such a blessing. Well, folks, we're out of time, but remember to be confident. You need to practice. You need to prepare. You need to study and you need to educate yourself. The more you do these things every single day, the better you're going to get day by day by day by day. And eventually you're going to be speaking. If, if you're, you know, communicating, you're going to be speaking passionately. You're going to be fueling, you know, energy. Energy is literally going to be fueling right from you to the camera, in my case, or to the audience that you're speaking to. You're going to have some fun and you'll be more relaxed about doing it as well. It'll be natural, just like breathing. And that's eventually where you want to end up being. Well, folks, I really hope this teaching has been helpful to you on how to be confident. Do check out the website at thebattleswealthface.com because we're going to be putting up the teaching on how to talk to the same sex or the opposite sex, a potential mate, you know, date, whatever you want to call it, how to flirt, you know, um, and, and do check us out there because I think that's going to be something that a lot of people struggle with, but we really, really want to help you with. Come and visit us at Battles Wheel Face. Check out our, uh, our shop. We've got some new uploads. We've got some new features in there as well. And if you've enjoyed this show, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Let us know that you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions for us, let us know. You know, I'm the face of this, but we've got an amazing team both behind the camera and on social media that are helping us to really grow uh, my body and soul. And we're so excited for where this is going. As always, don't forget to share, tell a friend, because it may be the very, very thing that helps them. And I have been your host, John Morris. This has been the Mind, Body and Soul a Tuesday show, where we go that little bit deeper to help you find balance and the craziness of day-to-day -day life. Until next time, take care, God bless, and I'll see you soon. Do you struggle with motivation? Feel yourself procrastinating a lot. Have amazing ideas and dreams, but struggle with the concept of how to get from where you are to where you want to be. Or maybe looking for something a little bit simpler, like wanting to get fit, or maybe wanting to lose a few pounds and tighten things up. Are you someone that struggles with anxiety or trauma or even depression? You're not alone. Many people around the world do. 
Hi folks, I'm John Morris. And for the last two decades I've been working with people from all over the world in all walks of life to really understand human beings, the concept, the behaviours and ultimately the reasons why. And I've had the privilege of coaching and working with folks just like you that maybe are struggling with anxiety or depression or trauma or wanting to get ahead, wanting to maybe build some long-term success but have no idea how to begin. This is what I do. And with John Morris Life Coaching, you're in really, really good hands. Why can I say this? Because you're not only gonna get an experienced life coach, you're also gonna get somebody that has a wide variety of experiences, from youth ministry and working with teenagers and children, to someone who's worked with drug addicts and alcoholics, people that have day-to-day -day dependency issues, to, to somebody maybe just like you, that just wants that little bit of encouragement, wants that little bit of motivation, and wants support to get to that next level. With John Morris Personal Life Coaching, you're in really good hands. A lot of my clients would tell you, if they were here now, that one of the greatest assets to John Morris Life Coaching is you can see things exactly as you want to see them, without fear of being controlled and conformed like a lot of therapists and coaches do. We help you right where you're at to get to the place that you want to be, step by step, to figure out a plan. So if this sounds like something that you would be interested in, having that support, motivation, encouragement, and even education, should you need it, then get in touch with me today. I would love to hear from you. Places are limited, so please don't delay. We've got a very, very small window of opportunity remaining. We all need help from time to time, but the difference between success and failure, achieving our dreams, and maybe just letting our dreams go by, depends on the level of help that we have available and that we're willing to accept. So get in touch with me today at John Morris Life Coaching. You'll be glad you did, and I'll see you soon.